Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jacob. And in this video, we're going to continue learning about making API calls inside of Bubble. In particular, we're going to look at how we can make our calls dynamic. So if you missed the last two videos, I'll make sure to link to them in the description. And let's start by just reviewing what we did last time. So in the last video, we connected to this deck of cards API. We set up a call inside of the API connector inside of Bubble here. And we put a repeating group on our page here. And let's preview this to see what we're getting back. We're getting back images of some cards. And of course, this data is coming from this deck of cards API here. So if we go to the documentation, let's remember that the endpoint that we're making a request to is right here. If we go to the API connector and check out how we have set everything up, you can see that inside of this draw cards call right here, this is the endpoint where we're making our request. And if we just reinitialize this call, here's the data that we're giving back in JSON format. And we're using this inside of our interface to get the images that we just saw. And every time this page is refreshed here, we'll get two new cards like this, right? So, so far so good, but if we look at the actual endpoint here, there's one thing about this that I wanna change and, and one way that we can make this a little bit more interesting. Right now you can see that this count variable here is hard coded to two. And if we go back and look at the documentation, for this draw a card endpoint, it says the count variable defines how many cards to draw from the deck, count equals two. Now, this is great if we want to get two cards back every time, but what if we wanted to give our users the option to say how many cards they wanted returned back to them? Okay, and this, this comes up often, right? You know, this wouldn't be so useful, or APIs wouldn't be so useful if we had to hard code them every time. Very often, we get into a situation where we want our calls to be dynamic. So the requests that we send out to whatever API we're trying to connect with, um, the information that we send in our request will be given to us by users of our application. So let's talk about how we can make this count variable dynamic here. Now, before we mess around with the API connector here, let's go to the design tab and we'll play around with this a little bit. So I'm just gonna drag this repeating group down on the page. We'll put a text element here and we'll say, how many cards would you like to draw? Let's remove the style. We'll center this, make it a little bit bigger and let's center it on the page. And then I'll put a slider input right down here. And I'm just gonna copy this text element, paste it below, and we'll make this, the, the, the text inside of here, we'll make this dynamic. We'll say that this is gonna be equal to slider input A's value. Okay, and for slider input A, a minimum value, let's say the minimum value is one, and the maximum value is 10. And if we preview this, okay, not so pretty, but that's okay. This is uh, not a design lesson. Fortunately, I will, uh, for, for, fortunately for you guys, I will not be teaching design. I'm not the greatest designer. Um, but anyways, here we go. We have this interface that the user can, you know, they can drag around the slider and select how many cards they'd like to draw. Let's put a button in here too. So let's move this down a little bit more. We'll grab a button and we'll put the button here. We'll center this button on the page and we'll say draw cards. Okay, perfect. So let's refresh the page. Right now, of course, this repeating group is still just gonna give us back two cards regardless. But the idea here is what? A user would come to our page. They would drag the slider around if they want to draw seven cards. And when they click on draw cards, then we will fire off this API request to Deck of Cards API. We'll receive a response and we will display seven cards, random cards uh, inside of this repeating group here. So now that we've built this interface, 
let's go back to the API connector and let's play around with this call that we're making. So of course, what we need to, what we need to mess around with here is this count parameter, right? Now I'm using, I'm, I said parameter, I said variable. I, I'm talking about the same thing. This piece of data that we're attaching to the end of our endpoint here, right? That will give information to deck of cards API about how many cards we want returned to us. If you look right here, you can see that bubble is saying use these square brackets for params. So why don't we do that? I'm going to click into this endpoint input. Let's get rid of two here and I'm going to use square brackets. And inside of here, I'm just going to write the word count. Now watch what happens when I do that. We have this other input that appears here. The key is called count and we can put a value in right over here. Just for testing, just for getting this um, count variable firing, I'm going to hard code four in here right now, and I'm going to reinitialize the call. And if we take a look at the response that we just got, we can see looking at this JSON here that we're actually getting four cards returned to us. And actually, if we scroll down, we can see that this remaining value is 48. So we have 48 cards remaining, meaning that we just drew four cards from the deck, which is what we would want. Okay. So, so far, so good. I'm going to click on save. So now that we've initialized this call and we can see that this count variable is working here, that we're getting four cards back in this case, there's still one more thing that we need to do in order to expose this count variable so that we can manipulate it. And that is to uncheck this private box right here. So I'm going to uncheck this. Let's go back to the design tab and take a look at what that did. If we go back to the design tab and see this repeating group here, and if we click on this deck of cards, draw cards call that we're making, we can see that this count parameter is now exposed, right? Now, watch what happens, right? If I go to the plugin tab here and recheck private, we're not going to see this count parameter exposed. So really important if you're trying to make your calls dynamic and you set up a parameter here that you want to manipulate, really important to uncheck this private box right over here. In the design tab, if we go and look at this call one more time, this count parameter, we obviously don't want to hard code this as a four. The whole point was to make this dynamic. So I'm going to click here. We're going to say insert dynamic data. Where is this data going to come from? Well, the value is going to come from whatever this slider input value is. So we'll say count will be equal to slider input A's value. And if we refresh the page now, you can see that by default, the slider value is one. And if I change this to seven, there we go. We make another API call to deck of cards API. And you can see that we get seven cards returned to us, which is pretty cool. Now, this interface would be a little bit confusing if we left it as is, because as we drag this slider and make a call here, um, we wouldn't expect that as a user, right? What would you expect? You would expect that first you would decide how many cards you want on the slider. And then when you click the button, that's when these cards would appear here. So let's try to do that. If I go to the design tab here, we know that we want something to happen when this draw cards button is clicked. So we'll click start edit workflow. And when button draw cards is clicked, we'll click to add an action. Now all of the API, I mean, the API connector is just a plugin, right? So it's the actions there are going to be under plugins, but we can see that there's nothing here that has to do with this deck of cards API, right? Now, this is another really important part. We mentioned this in the last video, but we haven't actually talked about what the difference is in the API connector here. If I go back to the plugins tab and I change this call or this, this drop down right here, from data to action, that's when we can use this action inside of a workflow, right? What are actions? Actions are things that we use inside of workflows. So I'm going to change this from data to action, and we get an issue here. 
you can see it says deck of cards, draw cards is not a possible option. Let's click on this and see what Bubble's talking about. Look at that. Because we changed this from data to action, we can no longer use this deck of cards, draw cards as a data call here. It doesn't even exist in this API provider list, right? These Stripe ones do because I, I think these are actually coming from the Bubble Stripe plugin. But anyways, we saw a deck of cards, that API call that we set up in the API connector. We saw that listed here as an API provider previously. If I switch this back to data, this issue is going to go away. And we can see that as an API provider, this deck of cards, draw cards is, is there again. So Sometimes I'm asked why Bubble makes you choose between data and action. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, most often I do use my API calls as an action and I do use them inside of workflows. So, I mean, for the sake of this example, we'll do that, but it, it doesn't matter for the most part. I, I find most of the time you do want to use them as actions, but as long as you're aware of what the difference is there, that's what is most important. So anyways, let's leave this as an action. We'll go to our design tab now. And let's start by just clearing the data source here. Okay, so we'll clear this expression. We no longer have that issue. And why don't we change the type of content here back to a draw cards card. Okay, if you're confused about this type of content, what a draw cards card is. We covered that in the last video in depth. So make sure to go watch the video that I released previously. And right now we're going to leave this data source blank. I'm going to, I believe the issue that we're getting is because the image element here was previously expecting the cell to hold an image. And now this cell is holding a draw cards card. So let's say that we want to show the image associated with the current cells draw cards card image right here and that will get rid of that issue okay so if we preview this we can see that the repeating group is not showing up here which is fine that's what we would want and if we drag this slider nothing is happening still now when we click on draw cards card that's when we will fire off this api request receive a response and what we're going to do is we're going to take that response and display it inside of this repeating group here. So we'll leave that data source blank and inside of our workflow, we'll take that response that we get and kind of push it, pass it to this repeating group to fill in uh, the data there. So inside of our workflows, let's go back to this button right here. The first thing that we want to do when this button is clicked is we'll say, if we go to plugins now, because we've changed that use as dropdown to action instead of data, there we have deck of cards, draw cards. So I'm going to say in step one, we want to make that API request. There's that count parameter that we have exposed. We've already said that this is going to be dynamic. Where is this value coming from? It's coming from this slider right here. So we'll say fire off this deck of cards, draw cards call. And for the count parameter, We'll insert dynamic data. We'll say this is going to be equal to slider input A's value. Okay, so far so good. Now, what's cool about this is that, again, because we've initialized this call, because Bubble knows what to expect as a response here, this step one is actually going to return a result to us that I can use in subsequent workflow actions or that I can reference, right? So what do I want to do here? We said that we wanted to take the response that we're receiving from step one and display it inside of this repeating group that we have on the page that has an empty data source right now. And there's an action that we can use for that. So we're going to click to add an action. We're going to say element actions, display list inside of a repeating group. Right now, we only have one repeating group on our page, so Bubble is smart enough to recognize that, well, this must be the repeating group that you want to display whatever list you're going to display inside of. And for the data source here, remember that we said the type of content for this repeating group is a draw cards card. So as long as we fill in a list of cards, 
from this API response, Bubble will be happy and we'll see a nice blue expression and we'll get rid of this issue here. Now, if I click here, look at that. We have the result of step one. That's where that response is gonna come back to us. So we'll say the result of step one and there are our cards right here. And we get this nice blue expression because we're being consistent with the type of content that we're trying to display inside of this repeating group. So let's preview our application now. We should have everything working now. So if I take this slider and say that I want to receive five cards, when I click on this button, there are the five cards that we receive. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And I can change this as well. Fire off another request and get seven cards back or one card back or two cards back. Let's see. And there we go. Right. So not a very useful application, but you could actually build out, I think, a pretty cool card game just using this deck of cards API and some, some fairly simple logic. The important part that I want you to remember here, let's review what we talked about, and that is just making our calls dynamic and also the important difference between that use as, that use as dropdown inside of the API connector, the difference between using an API call as a data call versus using it as an action that you can use inside of workflows. Now, once we use this as an action, you can see that we received a response from step one and that we're referencing it in step two by saying the result of step one. We can take these cards, in this case, we displayed this data inside of a repeating group, but we could do whatever we wanted with it, right? We could save it to our database. We could store it inside of a custom state. Once we have this data back, it really is, we can move it wherever we want. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to continue learning about APIs. We're going to look at a few more practical examples uh, that you might use. And we're also going to talk about authentication too. So make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.